But uh, let's get to the escalating political turmoil boiling over in the Middle East right now in Syria. As many as 19 people were reportedly killed today amidst fierce new clashes between protesters and government security forces. In Jordan, a rare scene when a typical peaceful demonstration turns brutally violent. CNN's Arwa Damon is in Amman. At the front, a small group of monarchy loyalists, followed by rows of police, separating them from the pro-reform demonstrators, numbering in the hundreds. <laughs> Chanting against the high cost of living. <laughs> Carrying banners demanding political, economic, and social reforms. An end to corruption and calling for a constitutional monarchy. <laughs> Frustrated by the slow pace of government reforms despite multiple pledges. The two sides have clashed in the past, prompting the government to promise that the protesters will be protected. Then, with the protesters steps away from their destination, the riot police charge in. Chasing away and viciously beating the demonstrators. The media has been issued bright orange vests to identify us, we were told. This is not the image Jordan's government wants the world to see. The tiny financially strapped nation can hardly afford to scare tourists away. Most demonstrations here have been peaceful, but not this one. The demonstrators have regrouped in significantly smaller numbers and appear to be trying to make their way again into that central area where they're trying to stage their demonstration. Violence erupts again. We see a man beaten with sticks, kicked to the ground and beaten again. Others carry him off. We wait until he's well enough to speak and ask what happened. <laughs> the officers open the way to the square, Ali Jawabir tells us. So we called the group to come, but it seems that the police are not following orders. It's just revenge. They are getting back at anything called reforms. We approach the storefront where the group was gathered. Inside, a man on the ground, tissues covered in blood. He was hit on the head, someone says. Another shows us a gash in his arm. In the back, around 20 women, huddled, seeking shelter. She says she was hit on the head, is feeling quite shaky right now. In fact, they were all saying that they're quite shaken up. They don't really want to want to talk to us at this stage. After all that, the remaining demonstrators are allowed into the square. We ask the police press officer on site what happened. He wants 10 more minutes so that he can understand exactly what transpired. This photographer says the police attacked him and argues with the police press officer who denies the media was targeted. This is the moment I was hit. This. Do you see it? Yeah. This. This is the last picture I took. He hit me with the shield. And so now all of the press, I'm just being told, in solidarity, are removing these orange vests. Police press officer Mohammed Al Khatib finally gives us this explanation. There were two demonstrations with opposing views, he says, and they clashed, and the police tried to split them up and sustained some injuries. And he denies that the police beat people unnecessarily. We saw them, and we have on tape them beating people who were not doing anything at all, who were not... That's what you saw, he says. The police used appropriate force. Salman al Masaid was in the front row of the pro-reform demonstration. We did not see a single person attack us. We were right in front, he says. The only people that attacked us were the security forces with their batons. Though the demonstrators' numbers here were diminished, they remain steadfast behind their demands for real change and reform. Arwa Damon, CNN, Amman. Pretty dramatic developments in Amman. Jordan will stay on top of that. Thank you, Arwa, for that report.